All right, everyone. So welcome to the Flask tutorial on databases and database models. So we're going to be resuming our Flask tutorial videos, and we're going to start off with just making sure that we have the three modules that we need in order to start this, or four modules, I should say. At the beginning, we installed various modules, and I believe one of them I forgot um, as a dependency of one other that isn't automatically installed. So we want to make sure that you have the MySQL client for Python. This diverges a bit from the original tutorial I mentioned that this was based off of, but uh, MySQL is a fine little database that we can use and is just simply avail available for us to use throughout this project as an example to demonstrate modules and, or not modules, models and just simple database communications. So we want to make sure that this is installed. All right, so already satisfied. And on top of that, we also want to make sure that we have Flask SQL Alchemy and that we have Flask Login Manager, or not flag, not Login Manager, just Login. Okay, so those all seem to be fine. So we are good to go. We're going to go back into Sublime Text and start working on our databases. So one of the first things we need to do is head on in to our little Flask file right here, or Flask um, app file, where we're going to init everything. And we want to import those two last things that we checked. So we want to say from Flask SQL Alchemy, import SQL Alchemy. Next, we want to say from Flask login, import login manager. Now, these two are very, very important to our overall process of dealing with databases. SQL Alchemy is a very key part of database manipulation in Python, but it demonstrates something used in very many different languages and programs. SQL Alchemy will take all of our classes that we define as being part of our database and allow us to manipulate those classes through Python and then itself write all of those operations into SQL for us and push that to the database. That way we ourselves as programmers don't actually have to send those queries or write those queries ourselves. And it'll all be done through SQL Alchemy. This uh, really makes our workflow a lot easier and prevents us from making mistakes that could lead to SQL injection flaws or just simple semantic errors because we didn't understand SQL um, as well as we should have. So it prevents us from making errors for later on in the future and just makes our workflow simpler and faster. Login Manager or Flask Login is used to kind of keep track of our session cookies, who's logged in, are they going to log out, how to log out, how to log someone in, verifying information about the user, is the user anonymous, and all of that good stuff. And it's very important, especially after we wrote our login form in the last video, that we have that so we can actually log in our users. We're also going to want to go down here where we import views and import models. Now, we don't yet have a models file, so this is going to probably yell at you depending on what IDE you're using, but we will get there soon enough. So let's define our objects right here. I'm going to make a little comment here just to explain what these are. So these are going to be where these are going to be our essential objects, and we're just going to initialize them here. The first one is going to be our database object, and this is created from SQL Alchemy. So we're going to make a SQL Alchemy object and just pass it our app object so it knows where to get its information from for the configuration, where our database is and allow us to use that later on in our module or models file. Below this is where we're going to define our login manager. And that's just going to be login manager for the object. And then we want a underscore, not a minus. And then here we want to initialize our manager. So we're going to init with the app app or whatever you have named your app. And now we can move on to actually checking and creating our database. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using the root user with the default password of password for MySQL 
to log in and handle our database. In production, that's an awful, awful idea. Password is an easy password, and you should never use your root user for actual production settings. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to be using it to avoid a long setup process of MySQL and stuff that isn't necessarily important to uh, learning Flask. So I'm going to log into MySQL here. And then what we want to do in here is just say create database YouTube blog. You're going to want to make sure you have MySQL installed and you can do that by just Googling MySQL download and installing it for your operating system. So create database YouTube blog. I've already done it so it'll say that database already exists, but if you hadn't created it, that should create it for you. Now we're going to go back into Sublime. Our next step is to go into config.py and set up the configuration variable for SQL Alchemy. This is going to be all caps, SQL Alchemy database URI. Now this will be the URL, or well, URI, to our database location for our MySQL database. And it's very important that we follow the pattern here. Now this is going to be hard coded in, which you can avoid in very very many ways, but uh, again for demonstration and simplicity we're not going to go over that because it's not too important to the understanding of a uh, flask. So right here in our URI we're going to start off by saying mysql colon slash slash and then the username that you're using to log in, in my case root, followed by a colon and then the password. And this is why, again, you don't want to have this in here as a static thing unless you're very sure that it's locked down because it's bad practice to just put a password somewhere in a file hard-coded where it logs in. But again, simplicity. After this password, we're just going to put the at sign and then the location to our MySQL server. In this case, it's the same as Sheen, so it's just localhost. And then slash and the database name that we want to use. In our case, YouTube blog. And we will save that. This way, in our init file, when we create our SQL Alchemy object here, and it gets the configuration information from app, it'll look in here for the SQL Alchemy database URI and see the location to our database and the user and password to use along with that. So now, in order to get this to run, we need to make sure that we have a models file, because right now that's the only thing we're really lacking here. So we're going to make a models file in the same directory as everything else that's a part of our application inside of the app folder. This file is just going to be called models.py. Now in here we need to import a couple things in order to make sure that everything works out. And it's going to be the same two things that we imported in the uh, app init file. So we're going to say from app import db and from app import login manager. This way we can use them inside the models and models are going to be the code representation of a database table. And this again, as I said earlier, makes it so we don't have to write the SQL ourselves, which is such an awful thing to do and you want to avoid that at all costs. Uh, trying to do that on your own can lead to awful, awful problems in the future. So we want to make these code representations so that we can focus on the code and not the queries to the database. So our first object um, is going to be a representation of the users table for our database because users are very important and very integral to our blog website. So we're going to make a new class here named user or whatever you want to name the table. We're, I'm going to use user because I think that's an easy way to remember that it's the representation for our user table. And this is going to inherit from the DB model class. So inside these parentheses is how Python does its inheritance. So right in there we're going to say DB model so it inherits from model and that will just tell SQL Alchemy how to set it up, realize that it is a model for a, a database table and figure out how to use all those settings. Inside of this class, we want to define a few key port portions of our user. A user should have a username, an email, a password, a salt for encrypting that password, and a user, e or a user ID. 
A user ID is kind of interesting uh, because it's very unique to your user and you don't really ever see it anywhere on a website. You know that a website has your username, email, password, and all of that stored on it somewhere. But an ID isn't something a user really thinks of, and it's for the purposes of the programmer as a very specific, unique way to identify some sort of row that is captured in the database table. Or in our case, it will re represent the specific user object that we are going to write to our database table. So in here, we want to just say, start off with ID, the identifier for it. And this is going to be a column of type integer. So to do this with SQL Alchemy, we're going to say db.column to show that it's going to be a column object from our database. And the first thing in its parameter list is the type for the column. In our case, that's going to be an integer. So we're going to, we're going to do db.integer. The next parameter here is primary key. And we're going to set this equal to true. What this does is it tells our database that there cannot be an ID that is the same as some other ID. This way, it's a very unique identifier that we can use that only one user will have and another user cannot have. Uh, emails and usernames usually also suffice for this, but an ID is usually a very simple one to like four letters unless you're dealing with a huge amount of users, in which case, congratulations on your success. Uh, but it's just going to be a much simpler way to handle our users and is a very conventional way of representing the unique ID of your user. And primary key says that this is the key you use when looking up something in the user table, although it is not the only way. The next thing we want to do is specify the username column, which is going to be, again, another... Okay, my Amazon Echo uh, decided that I said its name. Uh, our next column is going to be the username column, which, again, we're just going to say db.column. So then this column is going to be also a normal database column of type string. And we want to make the length of this string something that can encompass normal usernames, but isn't going to be so long that it uses a lot of data. So we kind of want to make it a good enough size for most people to be able to store what they want and not be something massive like a text uh, text type column that would take up a lot more memory. So 64 should be fine, and that will define the length of our string type here. And then what we want to do is also set this to uh, have index equal true because we want to be able to look these up through an index and unique equal true. Then we're going to do the same for email. It's going to be very similar except for the tendency with emails is that they're a lot longer. Oops. DB column dot column. Wow. Okay. You learn how to type. Um, Emails tend to be a bit longer because they have to deal with like the at sign and then whatever the host is. And so I'm going to make these 120 characters. And then the index will also be true for this and unique for this as well. Because we don't want someone to be able to make multiple accounts with the same email in case we try to contact them about the status of one of those accounts. Then we have our last two things that are very, very important. And they're going to be a little bit more unique than the other ones later on. And we're going to probably dedicate a whole video on how to handle these. And that's salt and password. Salt is something we're going to use to help hash our passwords so that they're harder to crack and just make them more secure in general. And the password is simply the hash of the password. So let's start off with salt. And salt is going to be a, another column of type string. And the string is going to be 72 characters long. And then the next column is going to be password, which is going to be another DB column of type string. But this is going to be 1024, so we can have a pretty long hash stored in here if we choose to. With all this information in there, 
we are good to save this. And in the next video, we'll work on actually hashing these and working with the login manager to create an actual user um, with real information and the ability to log in. So we have one more thing to do before we can kind of say sayonara in this video. We're going to make another file underneath of our app or our Flask folder here. And that's going to be, sorry, new file. That's going to be D, that's going to be, sorry. It's going to be called our db underscore create dot pi. So this file is going to just have two simple lines in it. And that is from app import db, if we spell import right. And then the next line is just going to be db dot create underscore all. And this will go through, find the models associated with the database and create those tables for us. So once we have that saved, assuming that all of your modules are installed properly, we can do a directory listing here, make sure you see that file and simply say Python db create and hit enter. Might sit there for a little bit, give you a little bit of an error about some deprecation that's going to happen in the future. No need to worry. And if we log back into our MySQL account here under YouTube blog and show tables, we now have our user table. And if we describe user, we have all the fields that we said and we can see them in the form of SQL with the same data that we said in our Python object. So congratulations, you now have your first database created with Python. We now have our connection to the database and we have our table for our users. In the next video, we're gonna talk about hashing passwords and actually creating logins for our users so that we can log in with our user and display the information stored for that account and that table using the uh, database model that we created in this video and another module we will create in the next video on hashing and storing passwords. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you would like to see future videos, hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button and I will see you next time.